Hi there! Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Scratch Programming Displaying Variable Data. I'm Tim Warner. If you've done any work in Scratch, you know how useful variables are. You don't have to worry about data types or anything that you have to worry about with more complex programming environments. You can simply click make a variable, give it a name, I'll call it name, and you're done, right? And immediately you get a stage monitor for the variable as well as some variable specific command blocks as you see, set, change, show, and hide. So for instance, in this project, what if we wanted to get the Scratch Cat to say hello to us? How can we do that? Well, first of all, it's double left click the Scratch Cat. I'm going to change the sprite name to, you guessed it, Strat Scratch Cat. We'll go to Control, and when we start the application, we'll go to Looks and have the Scratch Cat ask, what's your name, and wait. That's a built-in block in the sensing category. Now, this text is completely variable. To prove that, I'm going to backspace and say this instead, what's your name friend? And we can test that by double left clicking the hat block and you see we have a data input that shows up down below. The wait means that it's going to sit there and wait unless and until you provide an answer. Once we get the answer, we want the cat to say something, right? Say hello. Well, we'd love it to say hello, comma, space, and then your name. Well, how in the world do you do that? How can we take this variable name? I mean, what we could do, let me disconnect that, is show the variable. Let's run this project and see if that works. What's your name? Okay, I typed Tim. Uh, it's not doing anything. It's just saying zero, <laughs> right? What in the world is going on here? Well, the problem is we haven't done anything or we haven't assigned any value to the variable. We've just created it. Actually, when you do an ask block, what's happening is that the answer or the user's response is coming back under the sensing category as an answer block type. And you see that we can show or hide that monitor on the screen just like this. So our name variable has a value value of zero. So what if we did, instead of say hello, can we say, say answer? Well, let's try that. Let's run the project. I'll say Tim. And the scratch cat says Tim. That's still, that's getting closer. But how in the world can we say hello, comma, space answer? It's not going to allow us to do that by dragging and dropping. Well, what I'm getting around to, yes, I'm leading you a bit, is under operators, we have a join block. And join enables us to combine or concatenate static text that we type as well as variable data. And you can actually nest joins. You oftentimes have to do that as a matter of fact. So watch this. So in the say block, we'll throw in a join and we'll say hi comma space. And we could bring in the answer here in the second part of that join just fine. In fact, let's try it. What's your name? Tim. Hi, Tim. Well, okay. I don't like all that space between hi and the answer. So let's just do hi comma and see if that works. Try it again. Yeah, I guess that's okay. But what if you wanted an exclamation point? What if you wanted to say something after the answer? As I said, you can join joins. Check this out. We'll bring out a second join, throw it into the second box, add our answer into the middle, and then we'll finish with a flourish by providing an exclamation point. Start. I'll say my name's Tim Warner, and now it says, hi, Tim Warner. Seems that when I had a hard space in here, it gave too much space. I took it away, and it doesn't give me enough, so let's try this one final time, and that's looking pretty darn good. This join tip ought to prove to be very helpful to you indeed. I know it was for me. It was a watershed moment, and it greatly broadened and deepened my ability to use Scratch to create meaningful interactions in games. With that, I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.